Red vs. Blue from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, http colon backslash backslash n dot wikipedia dot org. Red vs. Blue, The Blood Gulch Chronicles, sometimes abbreviated as RVB, is a science fiction comedy series created by Rooster Teeth Productions. The series is produced primarily by using the machinima technique of synchronizing video footage from computer and video games to pre-recorded dialogue and other audio. Footage is mostly from the multiplayer modes of Bungie Studios' first-person shooter video games Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 on the Microsoft Xbox video game console. Chronicling the story of two opposing teams of soldiers fighting a civil war in the middle of a desolate box canyon, the series is an absurdist parody of FPS games, military life, and other science fiction films. Red vs. Blue emerged from Bernie Burns' voiceover-enhanced gameplay videos of Halo Combat Evolved. Initially intended to be a short series of six to eight episodes, the project quickly achieved significant popularity following its April 1, 2003 internet premiere. As a result, Rooster Teeth decided to extend the series, whose fourth season ended on April 1, 2006. Both within the Machinima movement and among film critics, Red vs. Blue has been generally well received. Praised for its originality, the series has won four awards from the Academy of Machinima Arts and Sciences and has been credited with bringing new popularity to Machinima, helping it to gain more mainstream exposure and attracting more people to the art form. Graham Leggett, a former director of communications for Lincoln Center's Film Society, has called Red vs. Blue, quote, truly as sophisticated as Samuel Beckett. Although episodes continue to be released online, the four currently completed seasons are also available on DVD, making Red vs. Blue one of the first commercially released and successful Machinima products. Plot Red vs. Blue tells the story of the Red Team and the Blue Team, two groups of soldiers belonging to armies engaged in a civil war. Each team occupies a small base in a box canyon known as Blood Gulch. According to Simmons, one of the Red Team soldiers, each team's base exists only in response to the other team's base. Although both teams generally dislike each other and have standing orders to defeat their opponents and capture their flag, neither team's soldiers are usually motivated to fight each other. Teammates have an array of eccentric personalities and often create more problems for each other than for their enemies. The main storyline spans four seasons, and a fifth is planned to premiere in July 2006. Rooster Teeth also periodically releases self-referential public service announcements and holiday-themed videos, which are generally unrelated to the main storyline. In these videos, the members of both teams still act in character, except during introductions that refer to the Red vs. Blue series itself. Spoiler warning, plot and or ending details follow. Although Red vs. Blue is primarily filmed within Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, its creators consciously limit connections to the Halo fictional universe. A video made for E3 2003 portrays Master Chief as a showboating member of the Army, and the Red vs. Blue trailer and first episode establish that the series is set between the events of Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2. Beyond these references, however, the series follows an independent storyline, which, according to Burns, is intended to make it accessible to those unfamiliar with the games. For example, even though the season four cast includes an alien filmed using a Covenant Elite, Rooster Teeth never treats that character as part of the Covenant from Halo. Season 1. Main article, Red vs. Blue, Season 1. April 1st, 2003 to September 28th, 2003, Episodes 1 through 19. The delicate balance of indifference in Blood Gulch is disrupted by the introduction of new players to the conflict. Donut enters the fray on the red team and manages to capture the blue flag on his first day, after being sent on a fool's errand by Griffin Simmons. Meanwhile, a rookie named Caboose arrives for the blue team alongside a battle tank named Sheila, and they manage to accidentally kill the blue team's self-appointed leader, Church. At the request of Tucker and Caboose, Blue Command hires a mercenary named Tex to help. Church briefly returns as a ghost to warn his teammates about Tex, who soon arrives and attacks the Reds. After severely injuring Donut, Tex succeeds in returning the Blue Flag, but is captured by Sarge. Church again appears to the Blues to explain that Tex is actually his former girlfriend, whose mind is partially under the control of a psychotic artificial intelligence. Church organizes a rescue mission that succeeds after some difficulties. In an attempt to keep Tex stationed in Blood Gulch so that he can attempt to remove the AI from her head, Church possesses the Red Team's robot, Lopez, to warn them of Tex's pending attack. He fails, and, much to his horror, she is killed in action by Donut in revenge for her previous attack. Church runs to her side, stealing Lopez's body in the process. Season 2, 
Main article, Red vs. Blue Season 2, January 3, 2004 to June 11, 2004, Episodes 20 through 38. Three months later, a medic named Dufresne, soon nicknamed Doc, arrives in the canyon. On loan to both armies due to a lack of resources, he checks on the blue team just before the Reds attack. The Reds take Doc as a hostage, but soon tire of his personality and ditch him in the middle of the canyon. Church is still trying to get used to his new, stolen robot body, of which he eventually loses control. Tex returns as a ghost and informs the Blues that her evil, megalomaniacal AI, O'Malley, had jumped to Caboose right before her death, thereby explaining his recent aggressive behavior. Jumping inside Caboose's mind, Church and Tex succeed in driving out O'Malley, but the AI survives by possessing Doc. Later, Donut is captured by the Blues during a reconnaissance mission, and Sarge is forced to build two new robot bodies in exchange for his return. Meanwhile, Sheila and Lopez form their own robot army and come to the exchange in order to conquer the Blues. This culminates in a Mexican standoff, during which Tucker discovers that both teams are apparently secretly controlled by the same command, as both teams have the same contact, a man named Vic. O'Malley suddenly appears, kidnaps Lopez, and escapes with him through a teleporter. The red and blue teams call a truce and form two-man teams to pursue O'Malley. However, the teleporter malfunctions, and the teams become separated and scattered across various locations outside Blood Gulch. Season 3. Main article, Red vs. Blue, Season 3. October 12, 2004 through May 18, 2005, Episodes 39 through 57. Sergeant Caboose managed to escape from immortal, respawning, flag-obsessed red and blue soldiers, grunts, in Battle Creek. O'Malley hires a mercenary named Wyoming to kill Tucker due to his knowledge of the apparent conspiracy. After Simmons repairs the teleporter, the red and blue teams regroup on Sidewinder and confront O'Malley, only to have a reality-shattering bomb destroy the present and propel everyone except for Church into the future, represented by Halo 2. Church is thrown into the past, represented by Marathon Infinity and Marathon 2. The Reds and Blues who find themselves in the future soon battle O'Malley at his new fortress, only to end up trapped inside with an active time bomb, later revealed to speak in a foul-mouthed manner and respond to the name Andy. In the distant past, Church learns from Gary, a computer, of a prophecy that in the future, a blue being known as the Great Destroyer will use the Great Weapon to bring the Great Doom to billions of people. Believing that the prophecy refers to Caboose, Church travels forward in time to Blood Gulch in the recent past. He then attempts to prevent the problems that the teams had encountered in the previous two seasons and therefore prevent the events that lead up to the Great Doom. However, in a causality loop, Church realizes that it is in fact his interference that causes most or all of these problems in Blood Gulch in the first place. Eventually giving up on trying to change the past, he travels to Sidewinder and rejoins the main group as the explosion occurs so that he can be propelled into the future with everyone else. He arrives just in time to ask Gary, who still remains in the fortress, to stop Andy from destructing. Shortly after, O'Malley lays siege to his captured fortress with an army of robots, only to have them obliterated by an unknown being, just before he himself is seemingly killed by the same being. Unbeknownst to the Blues, the Reds leave mid-battle in search of a mysterious distress call. They arrive back at Blood Gulch, much to Griff's dismay. The season ends on a cliffhanger, as a creature is seen creeping up on an unsuspecting church. Season 4, main article, Red vs. Blue, Season 4. August 29, 2005 to April 1, 2006, Episodes 58 through 77. As the Red Team re-explores Blood Gulch, Simmons' insistence that Sheila still roams the canyon leads to his exile from the group. Painting himself mostly blue and taking command of the empty blue base and Sheila, he takes Griff hostage, later confessing to him that he believes Sheila might be hiding something. Back at the fortress, the blue team attempts to confront the new alien, only to experience a series of humiliating defeats until Caboose manages to befriend him. With Andy acting as a translator, the alien reveals that he has been on a sacred quest to save his people, and has come to the fortress to retrieve the great weapon, an energy sword, which only Tucker can now activate since he accidentally discovered it first. Threatening to kill everyone otherwise, the alien forces Tucker, Andy, and Caboose to partake of his quest, with Tex trailing and then joining them. Arriving at their final destination, the team finds a temple occupied by the grunts from Battle Creek. As Tex defeats them, Tucker uses the sword to open a gate to a flying ship, of which the alien quickly takes command. Wyoming suddenly reappears, however, and shoots the ship down before fleeing with Tex in pursuit.
Meanwhile, Church returns to the Blue Basin Blood Gulch and encounters the Blue Simmons, whom he pretends not to recognize and comes into contact with a distant descendant of Vic, who scoffs at Church's mention of Blue Command. Tucker, Caboose, and Andy return to the Gulch and inform Church of the events at the temple. Simmons returns to the Red Base and attempts to relay information learned from Vic Jr. about the war. At the Blue Base, Tucker becomes ill for an unknown reason and Church is forced to call Doc for help. On his arrival, O'Malley negotiates a deal to exchange Doc's aid for something to be named later. The Reds find Lopez, who had returned to the canyon with O'Malley, and discover that important instructions Red Command had planted inside his head can only be played in Spanish. While Church is confirming Doc's diagnosis that Tucker is pregnant, Sarge distracts Caboose and steals Andy to translate the plans. Tucker regains alertness and complains of stomach pains. Church, upon hearing of Andy's disappearance, becomes enraged at the whole situation. As he confronts the Reds with Sheila, Sarge radios command for reinforcements, despite having heard the translation of the uninformative instructions. Andy reveals that the alien had the ability to impregnate others with parasitic embryos. Via radio, Caboose informs Church that Tucker has given birth, a higher-pitched alien language is heard off-screen, and that O'Malley had left dock after Sarge had contacted command. As Church runs back to the Blue Base, a ship crashes into the Gulch right on top of Donut. Characters. Main article, list of characters in Red vs. Blue. Red vs. Blue features characters whose personalities are skewed in different ways and to varying degrees. These quirks and the ways that they interact in conflict with each other drive much of the plot and humor. The series has revolved around eight main characters, four on each team. In addition, several other characters, both affiliated and unaffiliated, human and non-human, have played significant roles at various points in the story. Main characters. Main article, list of main characters in Red vs. Blue. Sarge is the staff sergeant and leader of the Blood Gulch Red Team. A military man with a Southern American accent, he is the only Blood Gulch soldier on either team consistently serious about the Red vs. Blue Civil War. His psychotic battle plans often entail unnecessary casualties in his own men. In particular, a commonplace outcome is the death of Griff, who is habitually lazy, irresponsible, and uninsightful. These characteristics earn him the disrespect and ridicule of both Sarge and Simmons, Sarge's sycophantic, insecure right-hand man. Despite this, Simmons and Griff are often seen together, either chatting or bickering. Donut, the eager rookie who joins the team in Episode 3, tends to annoy his teammates with his naivete, garrulousness, and cheerfulness, and becomes more effeminate and childish as the series progresses. On the other side of the canyon, Church is the cynical de facto leader of the blue team. Often shouldering the responsibility of actually solving the various crises that the Blood Gulch teams encounter, he often ends up taking their brunt, leaving him increasingly disillusioned and antisocial. His serious, reasoned approach conflicts with the personalities of Tucker and Caboose. The former is snide, averse to work in battle, and obsessed with women. The latter, although physically strong, is unable to grasp simple concepts and exhibits varying degrees of stupidity and insanity throughout the series. Rounding out the Blue Team is Tex, Church's former girlfriend who is hired by Blue Command to join the team as a mercenary in Episode 10. Able to eliminate entire teams of soldiers by herself, she is described as, quote, the most lethal soldier in Blood Gulch. Significant supporting characters. Lopez, a robot built by Sarge that, due to a damaged voice card, only speaks Spanish. Sheila, the AI inside the Blue Team's tank. Doc, a medic who exhibits extreme pacifism. O'Malley, an evil megalomaniacal AI who can travel from host to host via radio. Andy, a bomb built by text to destroy O'Malley. He also translates for the alien. Alien, an alien who leads most of the blue team on a sacred quest. Gary, a computer terminal built to maintain knowledge of the great prophecy. Wyoming, a freelancer hired to kill Tucker. Vic, a sardonic, unhelpful communications officer. Vic Jr., a distant descendant of Vic, who is also a sardonic, unhelpful communications officer. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.